Schweitzer, our, uh, Kay Schweitzer is uh, one of our resident poets, and Ray Rolden is into haiku. You've seen some of his haiku. Pat Sullivan is also in Forest Hills. Pat Kincare is here in town. And Nikki Lindquist is uh, originally, um, fascinating background, originally from uh, Haiti, and has been here for decades and um, um, has been involved in all kinds of things in Greater Miami in teaching as well. There she is. Good morning, Nikki. Good morning. How is your mom? Doing well, thank you. At her 94. Mother, <laughs> her mother is 94 going on 20. It's very annoying. <laughs> I went to pick I love this. I went to pick up something from the car and her mother puts her arm and says, you're too old. Put that thing <laughs> down. And I thought, what? And she said, and I have to remember, she's 20 years older than me, and she's looking like she's 18. It's very annoying. <laughs> I mean, Pat can here. Okay, we're going to begin in just a second. Uh, we want to thank Andrew for sharing today. We've got a full boatload all the way through September. Uh, you'll be hearing from Larry. You'll be hearing from Maureen. You'll be hearing from Besa and Andrea. Uh, Ray is going to be reading today, a digit on, um, on uh, tech. We have a full summer schedule. Let me remind everybody gently and kindly, we do not slow down in the summer. We have our services at the regular time. We have book club every Saturday morning at 1030. And we have connections. So for those of you who forgot what connections is, connections is a time to let loose. Lots of people to have things happen. Life is not always sunshine, lollipops, and roses, as you all know. And what we have here is a group that meets um, on Tuesdays and on, on Thursday evenings from 6.30 to 7.30, a couple of times a month. And the and the, the group changes. It's a time to share. Share things that are going wrong, things that are not going quite right. And you're going to find that the people that you meet there are really good at listening and offering genuine support and comfort. It really is absolutely essential, I think, for any faith community, whatever the background is, to offer support and care. Um. Felix is back. I want to share with our New Yorkers that it is a very interesting thing that the, the weather in Miami <laughs> is cooler than it is in New York. I think that has to be a first ever in the summertime. Yes, Miami today is cooler than it is in New York. Ha, 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 ha. And in Elgin, oh, Illinois as well. I'll pay for that. Um, finally, before we begin, I want to thank all of you who I took a moment out to say uh, and offer some support. You may have heard that uh, we act we unexpectedly had to put our um, one of our dachshunds to sleep last Monday, and um, she was a classic example of genuine sweetness and kindness. Genuinely, um, her cousin, the wizard, is a rascal. Sadie is just sweet and lovely. She had a freak accident eight years ago. And to show you the kind of of just wonderful wonderful being that she was. The vet says, we'll probably have to put her down, come back tomorrow. And I came back and her her face is against the cage saying, I want to go home. And the vet says, that dog wants to go home. Let's see what happens. So she lasted for another eight years and something freaky again happened. And uh, she she lived to be 15 and she only should have lived to be eight. And she was just sweetness, kindness, not an ounce of resentment grievance or complaint she just was a, a, an idea would think the things go wrong what do you do do you get up and look forward or do you stay and resent and, and she just looked forward and was just uh sweet so it was not only sadie but what she stood for and what really surprised me was the number of people who said who, who shared with us their thoughts and grief i was overwhelmed by that so thank you all i deeply appreciate it. so does maria and so does sadie Chris Diaz joined us today. Chris Diaz is our polyglot. He is from North Miami. So one more time, everybody. Digit, Andrea, Selva, Nikki Linquist. Uh, let's see, where is Felix, Mary, Nick, Ray Rolden from New York as well. Maureen, Danny, Amelia, Chris Diaz, Pat and Care, and Pat Sullivan. All right. Let us um, take a moment and pull out a memorial candle, whatever candle you have. There has been so much, so much destruction and death this week. I don't know where to begin. So in your own mind, in your own thoughts, in your own consciousness, choose a couple of things that were really awful and we'll light them all together together 
thinking of things that need to be remembered, and especially innocents everywhere, who died through no fault of their own, wrong place, wrong time, not a good excuse. So let us hold all of those close, their surviving families and surviving family members, and our pets as well. May it be so. Amen. We welcome to us this morning as well, Chris Diaz, Pam Gray, also from New York, and Cindy and Larry Deach from Port Orange, uh, for, uh, for, yeah, Port Orange, Florida. Our call to worship, like everything we have, is for those who wish. If you would, Donald, pull up our call to worship, and Gail and Tom from Port Orange as well. For those of you who would, if you'd read with me together, today we gather a community of humans bonding in new forms of awareness, awakening, connecting, making new meaning, shifting the old ethos. Today, we seek more solidarity and harmony. We seek inclusion. We seek mutuality. We seek reconciliation. We seek justice for all people. Today, may our gathering of the waters reflect the gathering of our collective courage in the service of the grace and love that is promised by our liberal faith. And for those who wish, if you read the morning prayer with me, most holy God, known by so many names and none, we pray, as I breathe with each sunrise, I exhale with each sunset. I chase the shadows in search of truth, truth that always resides at the ground of being. I am reminded again of the power of connection, and in it I am reborn. Salah. Good morning. I don't know how I missed the fact that there's a mando cello solo in that song the first four hundred times I heard it. I'm really glad I heard it this morning. Of all the words in our theological languages, all of the easy and difficult words, all of those various ways that we describe being in community with one another, or with the sacred, grace is one of the harder words. By comparison, love is an easy word. It's an open word. It's kind of soft. It's kind of warm and fuzzy, like a warm blanket on a cold night. Love is good. As a word, love is easy. It's a good word. We like that word. Beloved, is another easier word. It speaks to the fondness that we have for one another, the breath of compassion that we carry for one another. It's an old fashioned feeling sort of word, calling up those traditional memories of something bigger, something active. It too is a good word. But grace, that's a hard word precisely because it means so many different things to so many different people. Grace is something bigger. It's something worth dreaming back into being, namely the union of imperfect people imperfectly intersecting with the perfect. Grace could be called luck if luck was finding a $20 bill on the street and then immediately handing it to someone in need. So grace is a kind of luck, a bigger luck, a non-selfish luck. It's an agape kind of luck. Grace defines and underpins most of our community. It is interconnected, interdependent, and interwoven. 
our community of learners and experts, warriors and healers, the empowered and the disempowered, it is grace that flows through those liminal spaces, a holy go-between. The When I titled this service, I titled it All is Grace, and it's taken from the memoir of a of Brennan Manning, who was a former Franciscan brother, former Catholic priest, a husband and former husband, and a lifelong alcoholic. In his, in his memoir, he talks a lot about how we will always try. We will always fall short, and we will always have to trust that grace will bring us back into community. Brennan situates grace firmly in the terms of his Catholic faith and centered in the idea that he is holy within the radical embrace of God. Nadia Bowles Weber, the founder of the House for All Saints and Sinners in Colorado, defines grace differently as something global, namely the radical, intentional embrace of humanity however imperfect it is, or imperfectly we do it. St. Ignatius of Loyola, who is perhaps the biggest single influence on my own spiritual path, writes about grace as an action word, saying, it is dangerous to make everybody go forward by the same road, and even worse to measure others by oneself. I'll say that bit again. It is worse to measure others by oneself. That phrase, that phrase haunted me throughout seminary because it challenged me to look directly at the way I interacted with others and the way that they interacted with me to remember that you can't fully receive love if you do not give love freely. Grace becomes then an act of accepting one another as they are, where they are, for whom they are, and then doing it from the ground of our own being. It's wholly something else. Think about that time you heard someone's story and you listened with a sympathetic ear. All the while you were trying to contextualize their history with your own, drawing a parallel, a parallel that colors their truth with your own heart story. That meaning making, that process of meaning making, that connection by resonance is normal in as much as it is incomplete. The call of grace is not to experience. The call of grace is to feel the strands and the threads of a community as they are being woven in new and vibrant ways in real time. The Reverend Manish Misra Marzetti, who was writing for an article for the UUA, wrote that the power of grace is that it saves us moves us towards our best and truest selves, even when we don't know what we're looking for or what we need, and it is amazing and beautiful. So whether we say that grace is just the intersection of being perfectly imperfect and imperfectly perfect, yeah. or we say that grace is an ethical code written in our mistakes as humans, grace doesn't care. Grace is still all demanding of us to do better each and every time. Lived grace is everywhere in Unitarian Universalism. It forms the mechanisms of our covenants. It is the foundation of our welcome. And it forms the art of our collective shared ministry as a congregation and as a faith to the world. Grace is neither alpha nor omega, but both and all the spaces in between. 
Julian of Norwich could have just as easily said, all is grace and all is grace and all manner of things shall be grace. Story time. And you may have heard it before. A friend of mine once owned an art gallery. And it was an art gallery built on the back of a Spanish market. And from time to time, I would help her out in her store. One day, while sorting through a bin of estate sale purchases, we found a set of vintage 1970s C9 ceramic lights. You know the kind. They're the big ones. She held them up to me and she said, do you want them? And I took a minute before finally choking out a response of, yes, please. And I didn't really care if those lights worked. I didn't care that half the bulbs were missing and impossible to replace. In the moment, the lights were telling me a story that I had misplaced. It was telling me a story of home and safety, of holiday celebrations long turned to dust and ash. The lights were reminding me that my own inner humanity requires me to meet the humanity of the world like sandals on the road to Jericho. The lights told me about the lights and tunnels and underpasses of lights in doorways, lights meant to exclude. Lights never intended for welcome, but always for safety. And this is how our faith comes into the story. Where the test of our Unitarian Universalist values comes into the all it promises to be. And we are in this moment of meaning making and prophetic promise right now. We are building a new way. Ren, my wife, reminds me that there are words in their, in their tradition, the Baha'i tradition, for this moment. These are the words of Baha'u'llah. Make your home a haven of rest and peace. Be hospitable and let the doors of your home be open to the faces of friends and strangers. Welcome everyone. Grace belongs not just to us, but to all of us, those we know, those we knew, and those we haven't known, and those we don't yet know. Our welcome, our inclusion, is a means by which grace moves. All is grace, and grace is all. We do not live for ourselves alone. We live to love all into their fullest life. And we are called to do it every day we draw breath. Our faith asks us to pay the high cost of willing to be transformed by faith through practice. To create for others, to create for others first what we would first have for ourselves. The focus on helping the other has long been a cornerstone of our social justice covenants. The world of grace, the world that awaits us, is a hearth fire of loving kindness. I hope that our passion, our grace, our commitment to a brighter, more multi-cued world boils over the edges one day and flows out into the streets. In the words of St. Ignatius of Loyola, Ait inflammate omnia. Go, be grace in the world. Go, be love in motion. Go, set the world on fire. Selah.
some 12,000 or so years ago, in what we now call Turkey, farmers had discovered and started growing wheat. And they found that a very simple way to greet people was to share some very simple flatbread. And since the water was kind of iffy, some watered down wine, and everybody sat down and they shared the bread together and they shared the wine together as a way of saying hello, a way of not only greeting, but affirming. That will carry on to other religions as well. Hittites will use it. Canaanites will use it. And ultimately, by, by 2,000 years ago, breaking bread and sharing a common cup will be a way that's universally realized as welcoming and greeting. Then comes along a Jewish carpenter named Yeshua or Yeshasha, depending upon your Aramaic or Hebrew, who did what you're not supposed to do. He actually took that seriously. He welcomed everybody. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to say you do, but you're only supposed to have bread with your own kind, whatever that may be. So you're going to see criticisms of his reg of him regularly eating with publicans and sinners. In case you're not sure what those words publicans and sinners mean, take a look at everybody here. That's us. That is us, everybody, publicans and sinners. And he accepted who they were and what they were and caused all kinds of riots, including in Jericho, when he asked the chief tax collector to go break bread with him. Somehow this got transformed into holy rites, incense, fencing of tables so you couldn't get near the, the bread unless you did this, this, and that. In our tradition, we have, using an interesting word, resurrected the very, very ancient idea of using simple bread and cup as a way to affirm and welcome all. And so we take a very simple, very simple, you can see it, very, very simple plate, very simple flatbread, and a very simple cup. And we offer this to anybody and everybody saying, you are welcomed. Thank you for being with us. May we affirm you and you affirm us in love and peace. Be grace. Be flowing grace, if you will. The meal as grace. Thank you, Andrew. And then we gather when we're in person, and here we do it uh, where you are. And we hold hands and we borrow, as is typical for us, something strange, Winnie the Pooh. Now, if though you're not aware of Winnie the Pooh, great wisdom takes place between Piglet and Pooh and the others. And so I'll ask Grimmy to put up words that we ask us to affirm our oneness, our flowing grace, if you would, Donald. And if you repeat after me, If you repeat the words after me, promise me you'll remember. You are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, smarter than you think. God didn't promise days without pain, laughter without sorrows, sun without rain. But the divine did promise strength for the day, comfort for the tears, and light for the way. And Andrea, if you read us the prayer that you uh, that you wrote for us, please. In the beauty and the stillness of this day, which we will all keep in our own way, May peace be in your heart, joy in your movements, a hope in your presence. Let all of us be a wordless prayer of joyful dance and song, hailing the future, hailing creation. Selah. We conclude, um, as usual, with a blend.
an old Irish blessing with a Hindu greeting. And now may the road rise to meet you. And may the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and may the rains fall softly upon your fields. And when we meet again, may the divine in me greet and embrace the divine in you. Go in peace. Flow with grace. Amen. Thank you all today for being here. Thank you, Donald, for tech. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Nick, Mary, Gail, and Tom. Thank you very much. Ray, thank you. Ray, by the way, and I'm sure he's going to be embarrassed about this. Ray had a stroke a year ago. He couldn't read. He couldn't talk. And you heard him today read. An incredible recovery. Two years in, I found out today, basically, that it's more than likely permanent damage but there is recovery. So keep at, keep at it day by day. Tom B. Saw had a birthday just recently. The um, millennia go by. Pam Gray is with us from, uh, let's see, Tom and Gail are from, uh, let's we go over again. Andrea is out in Elgin. Nick is here by the airport. Mary Grimmie is in Tampa Bay. Tom and Gail are in uh, Port Orange. Ray is in Washington Heights. Pam is in uh, um, Forest Hills. Selva is down by US-1 and Dayland Mall. Felix is in North Miami. Nikki is down in Cutler Bay. Dan is in um, uh, Forest Hills. Amelia is 10 miles west of Merritt Island. Pat Sullivan is in Forest Hills. Pat and Care is here. Chris Lee is in Taiwan. Uh, Mohika, yeah, Mohika. Moitza and Jaime are in Palm Beach County. Maureen is down near the, the Redland. Cindy and Larry are in um, are in uh, uh, Port Orange as well. And Chris Diaz is in North Miami. Maria is over here. We wish you all a blessed, blessed day. Remember, everybody, the heat. Remember and be careful. Next up, we have, uh, remember, we've got in the next uh, Saturday book club, Concessions coming up again. Blessings to you all. Be safe, be safe and well. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. Bye bye. 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 Good, good week. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Have a great week. Bye bye. Have a good week. Bye, everyone, and blessings to all. Amen. Great seeing you. Amen. Bye, everyone.